When a station carries two programs, one local and one network, the crossing of the two lines can bring unexpected effects. Listen to this. Uh, it's time for Love Line. You know there's going to be sex, drugs, rock and roll. The crowd seems to love this. Exclusively on Tucson Still Run, 92.1 KFMA, Green Valley, Tucson. Get your name to see if summer hidden. Now, here's Love Line with your hosts, Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Mike. Yeah. You're 18. Yeah. Uh, I have a question for Dr. Drew. Mm hmm. Uh, is it possible for someone to have intercourse during an unconscious period of sleep? Well, I, I don't know much, not that much about that topic, but we have certainly had our share of callers that claim to have had these sorts of experiences. So uh, I assume it is possible. I don't know exactly what it means, and I know of no particular syndrome that it's associated with, other than alcoholism. People sometimes drink a lot do that. Is uh, it abnormal, like... like I, I, it makes me... Crazy abnormal. No, what if the chick falls asleep halfway into it, Drew? That's happened to me a few times. Would that count? No. No? No. Okay. That's different. Uh, but it does make me concerned that there's some sort of sleep disorder present here. I mean, that's sort of where my instincts are to, to suggest somebody will get a sleep evaluation to see if there's something significantly disturbed about their sleep. But why? What happened? Uh, went on a camping trip and got a little liquored up, but not too much. Went to bed. And woke up the next morning, she was claiming that I had sex with her. Uh -huh. Well, that may have been a blackout, too. You ever blacked out before? Um, no. Actually, she said afterwards I got out, out of the tent, had a cigarette, and came back in. Yeah, I understand. But blackouts, people in blackouts are not unconscious. They just don't remember what they did. They have to get a new name for blackout. Yeah, because people assume they mean uh, unconscious. It should be like... Uh, I don't know. Well, they use the word blackout like they say, uh, like airplane pilots say, uh, the, 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 uh, the wing sheared off, the plane went to a nosedive, I was pulling uh, 10 Gs, and I blacked out right. for 15 seconds. Right, that's unconscious. That's right, different. but they, that's how they say blackout. I understand. Blackout, when it pertains to alcohol, merely means a dysfunction of memory. It's called a booze-off. Yeah, or memory lapse or something. Because what happens is th things don't file from memory, from short-term to long-term memory, so you have no capacity to access what happened during that period of time. And anybody seeing you during that time would think you were absolutely, totally normal. I went camping uh, last time, and I had a jack-out. That's a little bit different. How, how did jack-outs work? <laughs> Please. Hey, everybody, Bobcat's here. Hey, I'm in the house. I'm large. I'm fat. I'm just uh, jigging with You're it. not fat anymore. Oh, yeah. No kidding. PH fat. I know. Someone asked me if Bob was on heroin last time. Uh, <laughs> Yay. Yay. I'd like to dispel those rumors. I'm on uh, crack. He's really starting to look like um, art from Everclear. <laughs> I get that. Do you? Yeah, that and uh, Abe Vigoda. No, <laughs> I do get that art from Everclear. Well, if something ever happens to art, you can certainly uh, play the uh, art... Um, what, uh, uh, Alex uh, Aloxacus. No. Al Alex Al Alex art, art from Everclear. There That's go. good enough story. Hey, let's uh, finish with Mike, guys. Mike, right, so on, I Bob. think it was more of a blackout than anything else. And, and basically, blackout is thought to be a symptom of alcoholism. It may, you may not be far on in that disease but to have, start having blackouts, but people that have that phenomenon seem to be much, higher li much more likely to have the disease of alcoholism. Be very careful if there's any family history in your background. Uh, is there any tests or whatnot to see if it is a sleep? Disorder Do you have a family what? history of alcoholism? Um, there is an extensive history. All right, of then, then the good then enough. It's good enough. You can stop with the worrying about the sleep and start worrying about your relationship Did with you, alcohol. Uh, who is it that you had sex with? Um, a very close friend of mine for quite some time. Yeah. Did she not want to have sex with you? Uh, no. No, she didn't. No, she did not. Did okay. You, did you rape her? No. No. Um, I don't husband. remember the night. Completely, I do not remember. I, I, does she remember you raping her? She said that she felt everything, and in the morning. Oh, for Christ's sake. There. Are you experiencing a blackout right now, Mike? Did you rape her or not? No, I did not. No. So she welcomed your sexual advances. Didn't welcome them, but allowed them. Right. Okay. Yeah, listen, I don't, I don't know what it is, but uh, all bets are off camping. Uh, women who, you, you know, you couldn't pry their panties off with a flat bar in the city, uh, they turn into uh, hookers as soon as, you, uh, as soon as they get around a tree and a raccoon. It's the uh, effect of sterno. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it is. It's some sort of aphrodisiac, the burning sterno.
I gotta light one of those in my bathroom next time. All right, Bobcats, big ass shows. The name of the show. It's on FX did every it, night, ten thirty. Did it premiere a week ago today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big premiere, big launch. A lot of a uh, lot of radio spots. Saw a lot of uh, billboards. Well, not really billboards, but those things that they paste up on no, the construction sites. No, there's a billboard here in Los Angeles too. Oh, there is. Oh yeah, that's why I'm a little tardy. I would drove by it. <laughs> <laughs> that it was never going to get that good again. Where is it? Uh, it's in Compton. Uh, no, it's on uh, Pico in uh, Beverly Glen. Wow. Bob's arrived, everybody. It says, kiss my show. Big, uh, and a big, nice, cheesy photo of me. And uh, funny spots with, uh, I think it's uh, maybe Gene Rayburn from the uh, Match Game. Remember him, the world's oh, yeah. longest, thinnest microphone? Yeah. yeah. Uh, a little anal probe. Gene uh, is an old guy. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it looks yeah. old, yeah. What, wasn't in the commercial, it was in between breaks. I just grab him around the belly and go, you such a big boy, you such a big boy. <laughs> and he didn't uh, take to that. But I really did do that. I have footage of it, at least. Uh, good spots, and, and produced by uh, Stone Stanley. You're good friends. Who They are. Who you know, I got the job because of going on uh, Loveline. Did you? Did you know that? Well... I've told the story before, but uh, MTV and their infinite wisdom did not want Bobcat on the show once upon a time when I was explaining to them uh, Bobcat would be a real good guest on the show. And they said, uh, we've already booked the guy who cleans the septic tank from Road Rules. And then at the last second, he canceled. And they said, can you call up your good friend Bobcat? And I did, and he came on, and he kicked ass. And it's it's certainly in the 200 Loveline shows that we've done, it's Easily in the top 185. No. The one where I blew the bell beefer in your face. I think Bob uh, made a bit of TV history by farting on me, and it was audible, as you recall, yeah. true. Yeah, he didn't try to light it or anything. So. During the show. Yeah, but you never got to it go. together. Yeah, well, the probation for the fire is out, so I could have let it fly. But, but uh, Drew couldn't get it together. No, Drew likes a fart. Drew lost his crap. <laughs> Drew just couldn't keep it together. He kept going... Uh, you know, we we take some heavy call about uh, some kind of venereal warts or something, and then he'd start laughing again. <laughs> Drew likes a fart. He doesn't like to admit he likes a fart, but he likes a fart. So my point is, is Bob came on the show. Bob kicked ass. Everyone loved that show. They re-ran the hell out of that show. Stone Stanley, who produced... Well, no, then he came back again the next year. Right, yeah. and was great again. And yeah. Stone Stanley, who produced the show, took note of this and said, we want to work with this Did Bob Did they pull you Katz. aside that day? You know, from the last time I was on to shooting the pilot and everything. Like a week. Two weeks. Really? Two weeks. Oh, yeah. yes. See? But, I mean, they pull you aside and say, hey, what are you doing? I wanna... Yeah, you want to host uh, Bobcat's Big Ass Show? And I said, well, my name's already Bobcat, so we're halfway there. Oh, yeah, they're really taking a chance when they call it Bobcat's Big Ass Show that Bob would agree. Yeah. It was Gilbert's Big Ass Show for a while. It was touch and go. <laughs> uh, this show has uh, proved to be in, uh, quite a launching pad for many a talent. Everyone except for us, Drew. Yes. We've gone nowhere. But we're the pad. That's we're, true. Everything else is launched <laughs> off. You us. definitely are a pad. You're absorbent. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Drew has wings. So uh, what the hell else was it ever, was about? Was it ever called something else? Oh, yeah, yeah. Drew had an idea. Actually, I swear it was Drew the doesn't the have many comedic ideas, but once in a while he stumbles into something and makes a joke without knowing it. He called it uh, Bobcat's Pile of Show. Pile of Show is what I was referring to it as, yeah. Originally it was, yeah, I heard that I name wouldn't refer to, I wouldn't refer to it yeah. as anything else. Bobcat's Big Pile of Show. No, oh, I knew it couldn't have been you, Drew. Yeah, right. Then the TV guide ads know. would have been Bobcat's Big Pile of S-H dot dot dot. Right. Yeah, instead now the TV guide it says Bobcat's Big... A asterisk asterisk. Really? Yeah, so it looks like Bob gets big A plus plus show. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. It doesn't matter. We're about one rating point away from kicking the pro wrestler's ass, and then uh, then we rule cable. Do you, uh, how is the FX doing? What do they have? They have... I don't know if we're on a, a, all your markets, but we're, we're not in a lot of the markets, and, uh, and, the, and the show's doing well, so I'm surprised. And it's a it's a game show. Now I, I saw the pilot. I haven't seen any of the episodes because I've been here uh, hard. Because you work, and I'm not telling That's listeners right. to tune in my show at 10:30 on FX. <laughs> That's right. Is it a half hour hour? Yeah, it's a it's a half hour of hooey. But it's a it's a it's sort of a game show. It's uh, with a Bobcat stink on it. Did, did uh, Stone Stanley resurrect their Aztec uh, temple or anything? No, no. But we used the Loveline set. Oh yes. So so all those monitors are all over the place. And it's like a, it's a game show meets uh, the Gong Show, sort of, right? Yeah, yeah. They, uh, performance, people say. You know, audience members are asked to perform. Right. 
But let's, you know, let's 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 not get too deep. You know what I mean? We've got people getting beaten with dead fish and uh, people chewing tinfoil and oh. uh, people... Oh. Uh, oh, that hurts. All right, so it's a good time. Yeah. It's good mindless fun. Yeah. Okay, you're not going to learn anything other than... No, and no one's at home going, ooh, I, I could have got that one. Right. Ooh, you don't play at home, you know. <laughs> Isabel. Yes. You're 19. Yes, I am. You're on with Bobcat. Hi, I think you're the greatest. Well, thank you, but it's not a competition. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, here's my question. Um, I was diagnosed with herpes when I was 15, and since then I've been trying to figure out as much about it as I can. And I've started to do speeches at high schools and stuff, and so, you know, now I kind of need to know. Mm -hmm. And my question was, I found out about something called shedding, and it's about, like... Viral shedding. Yeah. Yeah. And it's about, like, five or six days a year. You don't know when they are. Well, mm -hmm. It, you can shed any time, okay. and the, the shedding becomes very intense just before an outbreak. And, and you're any... asymptomatic yeah. when it happens. Yes. And my question is, because the, the papers that I read said that you're, like, you can spread it through all bodily fluids, but what I'm wondering is... The body fluids, though, have to be in the region where the outbreak occurs. Okay, that's okay. what I wanted to know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a rash, and the rash, the rash itself is what is transmissible. Right. And the shedding occurs in the region where the rash might occur. Okay. You're okay. speaking at high schools on this? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a bummer. No, not really. Yeah, but let's Hey, the herpes lady's here. <laughs> Yay! Do you drive the herpes mobile <laughs> <laughs> and honk the horn? <laughs> like, guys don't have enough difficulty getting laid in high school already. Isabel's got to get up there on stage okay, in the so auditorium and scare them. the crap out of every woman. Exactly. Y you, you can decrease the risks by obviously wearing a condom. You, there are right. certain medication that decrease the uh, frequency of shedding and the yeah, concentration the of shedding. I got the new medications. Which then, one? Vanvir? Y yeah. Mm -hmm. And they said that you can't take it. They said that you can only take it once you break out. No, you can. There, there is chronic suppression. With, Valtrex is the one that they're primarily recommending for chronic suppression. But I, I'm not a huge fan of chronic suppression oh, okay. myself. But, uh, but it's certainly available for people with frequent outbreaks. And Drew, why don't you like it? I, I've seen people get funny headaches and depression, the funny mental status changes, and, I, you know, a chronic medication for something that I'm not entirely clear what the purpose is. I mean, to suppress a rash. It doesn't even mm, occur that often. Yeah, that's the point. It tends to burn out with time and just need to be very careful. Now, does the uh, stress of speaking in front of a, a school uh, help break it out or what? <laughs> Actually, no, it doesn't. I, I know, you know, you know your symptoms and you know what to do right before it happens so that you can avoid it completely. That's mm -hmm. a game on the, my show. Is, know uh, your symptoms. How long is the slideshow uh, portion? You know, I haven't put that together yet, but I want to because I'm ready to scare these kids as much as I can. All right. I, 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 you're, you're a pioneer, Isabella. Isabella's uh, motto is uh, she got late in high school, so you're not going <laughs> to. You should get, like, some effects makeup so you have big sores <laughs> dripping, you know. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. put like a, a sea anemone in your pants before you go out there. Uh, All right. Okay. She really needs to hit the junior college circuit. She'll be there. These people are even dumber than high school. That's because from whence she hearkens. In, in high school, there's some people that are potentially going to four-year universities. In junior college, guess what? They're all in junior college, Drew. Elizabeth. Hi. Now you're 19, too. Yes. Um, I had a question about... Guess how old Bobcat is. Oh, let's not <laughs> drag this game open again. I love this game. Speaking of herpes. <laughs> how old do you think Bobcat is? Isabel? Elizabeth? Um, 43. Ooh, all right, uh, let me write that down. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> 43. <laughs> <laughs> what a great game. Hey, how are the aqu uh, Aquabats? Doing? Aquabats are good. I'm shooting a pilot for Buena Vista with my Aquabats. Oh, that's right. And I just finished another video for a band called Chopper One, uh, and it's the number one single in Australia right now. Chopper One? Chopper One, yeah. My video is a big hit. Are, are they? Uh, it's like Spinal Tap. I got to go to Australia to be cool, you know? Are they uh, into the Christian rock? Uh, no. No. Okay. It's not jars of clay. I thought that's all. Uh, I thought you only worked with the religious. Ah, uh, hardy har har. <laughs> So 43 was your guess. Uh, hey, what's your problem? <laughs> what's wrong with you? Elizabeth? Oh, me. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, well, I have questions for Drew, but what's wrong with you? <laughs> um, I think actually on your show I heard this. I learned how to have an orgasm by sitting under the bathtub, under the stream of water. Well, this is the uh, Ann Wilkins technique. Right. Yeah. Right. It makes it uncomfortable for your boyfriend, I'm guessing. Well, no. Anyway, so my question is, 
Um, if I get in the habit of doing that and I get used to having an orgasm that way, is it going to be harder for me to have one um, during actual intercourse? No. The, oh. the more you master the whole experience, the, the better it will be for you. If you were using a... Don't you think you can be desensitized well, at some, at my, some yes. point? If you were using a high-powered you know, vibrator that was sort of like, abnormally uh, intense. Those things they use to strip paint? Yeah. Or yeah. like a, a fire hose. Yeah, right. But uh, what you're describing, I would think, would be normal. So as long as it's under, let's say, 45 PSI, she's yeah, safe? 45 PSI. Okay. That's the threshold. Great. All right. Thanks. Yeah, good luck. Are you living at home? <laughs> Uh, for the summer when okay. I'm not at school. Mm -hmm. And you think when your folks uh, get the bill <laughs> and they realize that uh, last month, the month before you pulled in, they went through 47 <laughs> gallons and then you moved in and they went through 5,500 gallons of water, you don't think that's going to raise an eyebrow? I hope not. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Take it easy. Bye. Right. What happened to you, Adam? I never masturbated in the shower. Oh, I thought you took the long shower. No. That wasn't my style. I couldn't masturbate standing up. You always refer to that. Well, I, I do it as um, sort of a... Um, homage to... Oh, homage to those who have come before <laughs> me and are still coming as we speak. But I'm not a shower masturbator. You, you know, Although one time when I was traveling uh, <laughs> with my... <laughs> he just yelled at me for talking about him on the air. But uh, one time I had to uh, share a um, hotel room with um, our buddy Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Seattle. And uh, we had a tub that was sort of backed up a little, oh. and uh, he took the first shower, and then I hopped in there, and the oh. water was up about, about shin height. And he said, uh, as I was in there showering <laughs> off, uh, be, be careful in there. I took, you know, it was one of those, take it easy in there. I took care of business about five minutes ago. Oh, oh it was like uh, the Titanic trying to avoid the iceberg. Oh. oh, it was not pretty. Did you jump out of the water? I feel, I'd been in you there. Could, you could get, like, inseminated in the feet. <laughs> I'd been in there for a few minutes, so I figured the only way to combat it was with a, uh, a salvo of my own. Salute. I figured I would neutralize it with urine and then give it the knockout punch with sperm. What do you think, Drew? Drew, could a woman get pregnant if she jumped in the tub right after uh, Jimmy did that? Very doubtful. But Very could likely. she, technically? I, I, technically, I suppose there's a, real, a, a possibility. Bobcat doesn't know about all your... No, your Bob habits. Can't. He doesn't know about your behavior. My favorite. Uh, <laughs> what about Jimmy and you were going to Vegas? Oh, please. You know, I swear to God, Jimmy called me today and started yelling at me uh, for talking about him on the but air. But Jimmy wanted to fart the whole trip. Right. So he ate, like, a can of oysters and a bunch of broccoli. His wife he, supported this dad. He ate a can. <laughs> he's, trying so to, ironic. he's trying to fart the whole trip. No, he ate pasta fazool. Which is his what he claims to be a secret macaroni. weapon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he ate that like a day or two beforehand, and then he said uh, about an hour before we hit the road, he ate clams right out of the can. <laughs> he said, "I don't even like clams. I just ate it right out of the can with a fork." I mean, uh, the poor guy. He's torturing but it didn't himself. Work. It didn't work at all. He didn't fart, but he got really sick. <laughs> his stomach hurt, but he didn't. He didn't fart. Yes. Yeah, see, God punishes those who eat clams. John. Yeah. What's going on? Hey, John, what's your problem? I'm 19, my girlfriend's 16, and my dad doesn't like it. Uh-oh. What? My dad doesn't like my girlfriend. She's too young. She's 16. Yeah. Your dad doesn't like her? Yeah. What, mm -hmm. do, you, what do you think? I've been going out with her for, like, two years now. We've been having a good relation for a while. You started when she was 14 and you were 17. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. But, you know, it's not, they're not just using her. I mean, they've been going out for a while. It's, it's on the fringe. Yeah. But it, but it might be okay. I can understand why your dad would be worried about it. Well, why is he, your dad pissed? Her dad well, should be, be pissed. I would be pissed if one of my sons did no, something like that. Oh, you'd be high-five. No, I would not be. No, I would not. You'd be scared that you might get sued no, uh, no. for statutory no, rape. And all the more reason. Look, that's the point. The parents should be responsible for what the kids do. I believe in that. And yeah. uh, to that extent, I would be creating consequences for behavior that I didn't think was right. But that's what would those consequences be? Only three days in the Disneyland Hotel instead of a week? <laughs> Drew has a suite at the Disneyland Hotel for his kids. They're named after his kids. I swear to God. Now, this guy's worried about going to jail. Is that what you just said? Yeah. I, what state are you in? Depression. What state? Confusion. John? Yeah. What state are you in? Denial. California. <laughs> California, as I understand, you, three years as long as the as you're not over 21. 
something like that over 20 is is uh, the law. So well, I, 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 again, I'm not entirely clear on this, but you might want to check with, with somebody. Yeah, you're not, yeah you, you should check. You should not yeah, might. Yeah. They should really name a city denial. Where are you living in? <laughs> living in denial. Plan. <laughs> Private Idaho. <laughs> You didn't know about Adam's habits in high school okay. that we used to. We got to go to they commercial. Pee on each other? No, they throw poo on each other. Oh, they throw in the poo. And they back up onto. They go to jacuzzis, oh, back up on the jets, I've never fill heard themselves of up. Such a, oh, oh the, that's the that's, temerity, Drew. I'm telling Please. you, you, we could have a whole big ass show on you. Drew, I, I can't believe you spreading those sorts of uh, rumors. Hey, let me uh, ask John something real quick. John, yeah, how old do you think Bobcat is? Thirty-seven. Ooh. We're inching down. All right, John. Hey, uh, hey, why don't we play How Old Do You Think Adam Is? <laughs> Just had a birthday. Drew, did you ever show up at that clam bake? Yeah. You were right. there? Oh, yeah. Uh, I was there. Bob, uh, Bob was at my birthday uh, last week, and Drew was there, but Drew went to the MTV Awards and showed up real late. Yeah. With some <laughs> Drew coke. showed up with Prince. He showed up with three black chicks <laughs> and, and uh, a kilo his, of coke. He had, he had his hoochies and a limo. John? Yeah. Uh, don't get her pregnant. All right. Okay? All right. All right. I don't know. They've been going out for two years. Be good to her. They've been going out for a couple of years. He's serious about uh, the relationship. Are you a player, John? John's gone. Yeah. God bless you, John. (laughs) All right. Drew? Yeah. Why don't you sell the next call? Yeah, sell the hell out of the next call, Drew. Bob does listen to the show. (laughs) A little more than I'm comfortable with. Sometimes when I'm on the road, it's my only friend. Thank you. (sighs) Go, Drew. I, I, I was going to uh, take this call, which is a six-year-old who's pregnant with her second child. I just saw that. And I thought, Yay! Okay. Right. I don't know what her question is yet. But, oh, that's uh, good enough. Yeah. All right. will be right back. Two point one KFMA. Hi, everybody. This is Art from Everclear, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Yes, you is. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. The great Bobcat is here. Bobcat's Big Ass Show is the name of the show. It's on FX, 1030. Every night, 1030. Monday through Friday. No, no, no. And Saturday and Sunday. Oh, really? Saturday and Sunday we show Best Of. So the show's been on a week, and come Saturday and Sunday we go, remember all the way back to Tuesday? Oh, gosh, our hairs were so different, our styles and fashion. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, ladies you hear in the background are Wing and Ding, who are Bobcats, um, lackeys. Children. I mean, children yes. for the show. Wing and Ding. I, I, now, you, do you wear wigs during the show? Uh, we have. Yeah, in the beginning sometimes. Yeah, it really works. It does? You yeah. see it? Yeah, I have. Okay. I saw the pilot in Stone Stanley's um, office. Right. Mm-hmm. But I, I haven't seen the show on, on air, but I, I saw the pilot. Well, you worked, that's why. We didn't have wigs on in the pilot. You didn't? No, they had Merkins on. <laughs> <laughs> Nicotine patches. Merkin would be a patch of, like a toupee for your nuts. Exactly. Basically yeah, yeah. is what a Merkin is. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> well, not for their nuts. Can you believe that? <laughs> uh, There'll be no bleeping tonight. Uh, which oh, one's w- which one's wing and which one's ding? I'm wing. Okay. Red hair. Oh, wing perfect. is red. Ding is blonde. That's Beauty. Right. Yeah. They have real names, but it's it's the you know they've forgotten they, them. Yeah. They weren't born wing and ding. And the crew guys go, I'm so sorry. I called you ding earlier. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. And you're wing. I'm sorry. <laughs> now you you guys didn't know Bobcat before this, did you? No. No. You just no, were... she thought I was Art from Everclear. I thought he was she Art did. from Everclear. She's all excited. Oh, really? Oh, that's Everybody, Everclear, this is Art yeah. from Everclear. Hey, look, Everclear is <laughs> exactly. in the house. Cool. <laughs> oh, I get to bring Everclear out on stage at the uh, Weenie Rose. I'm looking yeah. forward to you taking a bottle on the head. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, guys, this is my job. Probably just be a roll of nickels. <laughs> all right, we'll take some more calls with the uh, help of uh, the wing and the ding and the bobcat. Harmony. Hi. Hey, you're 16. Yeah. What's going on? All right. I have an eight-week-old we are eight week old little girl, and I'm pregnant with my second child. Yay! Good job! <laughs> I'm married to a 19-year-old guy, and I have a 23-year-old boyfriend. And my boyfriend's better in bed than I am. Or, I mean, than my husband. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, I would go to yeah. say that probably better than... Uh, never mind. <laughs> yeah. How can I make it so my, boy, my husband's better in bed? 
uh, have your kid learn how to say it. How can you? Have, teach your child right away. Are you my daddy? What happened to you, Harmony, growing up? You want to play some bets on that? Want to gamble? Sure. All right. Hold on, Harmony. Okay. We're going to gamble with uh, Wing and Ding and Bobcat and Drew and his big ass. Everyone, uh, Wing and Ding, can yeah. you uh, reach down Call into the, some cash, into the bowels oh, of, really? of those bras and pull out a dollar if you, you could? Do you take credit cards? Yeah. <laughs> you got to have a dollar. Caroline, what? Loan me one. Oh, dude. Caroline! Ah! <laughs> Say ding! Pay for wing and ding. Oh, you are, ladies, ladies, are we in disguise ding. right ladies, now? It's on, it's, on, it's on me. Oh, it's on me. Thanks, Dad. Ooh, a nice Thanks sweet pot here from uh, Mr. Moneybags. Big spender. Give him. It's their cable. Okay. We'll give, uh, <laughs> There'll be no splitting of this pot tonight. All right, all right, all right. All right, it's winner take all. There's five bucks sitting out there. Here's what we're doing. We are gambling on Harmony's past. She's 16. She has two kids. She has a 19-year-old husband. She has a 23-year-old boyfriend. What the hell was done to her growing up that created the Harmony that we know today? That she's knocked up twice before, uh, right. before a prom. What kind of environment? Drew, I'll let Drew go first to set an example. You know, it's, it might be best to let me go last so I can sort yeah. of find a refinement. You know what I mean? Find a, find a common denominator. No, just to find a, some more... Okay. Specific. I'll right? Because because I'm going to go. I, if I go general, it'll cover everything. All right. I will go with uh, physically abusive dad. Sexually abusive. Physically. Physical. No, she won't admit that. Sexual abuse. I'll just go absent dad. That, oh, that's it. Absent that, dad. No, that was my answer too. Now I don't know. What okay, I'm, I'm going to go with. I will it. go with alcoholic absent dad. That's, that's a decent. I one. was going to say absent dad. Ref refined. Well, his. everyone's got an refined answer. Refined yeah. I was going to say laughter. I was going to say, was was your dad around? Was your dad around? She's not there right now. We're gambling. Okay, well, oh, yeah, where was, is was she? Was your dad around? Was, no, was, you got to make a bet. Hold on. Okay. Wing? No dad. No, no dad, dad in house? And not alcoholic? Uh, Did he die? Hold on. Hold on a gone. second. I just said that. Yeah, Go but she can be more specific. Now she can say he died or something. Okay. I can just say, uh, yeah, not around. Either left when she was little or gone altogether. Never knew dead. him. Never. Yeah. That's different than the alcoholic who strays. Because it seems like she needs like a lot of okay, guys. Never okay, never knew that. Okay, Fine. ding, okay. ding. Um, I agree with all those things and um, probably some sexual abuse. All right, sexual abuse. By who? Perpetrated by who? Um, does, someone outside of the family, okay. probably. Okay, very good. Okay, I'm going yeah. creepy stepdad. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Creepy Ooh. stepdad. Very strong. I like that. Very answer. strong. Ooh, Ooh Drew looks got pissed got at Bob. all the bases covered. Yeah, go ahead, smart guy. Reading. Go ahead, doctor boy. Yeah. <laughs> Hurry. Okay. Hang on a second here. Uh, definitely uh, abusive. Don't do Brian Keith on us. All right. I'll, I'll go through. <laughs> He's tugging on his face. French! <laughs> abusive al alcoholic dad who left, uh, uh, and then then abused by mom's boyfriends sexually after that. All right. So wow. you're, you're going with the uh, hat trick. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, the deluxe meal. Harmony? Yeah. What's yeah, your close. What's your pass like? My dad, my mom and dad got divorced when I was nine, and I was raped by my sister's fiance. Wow. Oh, and, what, and, what, and the dad was a pretty violent guy. No. No. Did he drink at all? No. Oh. Why'd your parents? Why'd your parents? Uh, they fought all the time. Mm hmm But they left at nine. He left at nine. Mm -hmm. So wing, you're out. Well, okay. Uh, Ding had the sexual abuse. Sexual abuse. Yeah. I think the pot carries. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think Ding was close. But I think Ding was close. It had to be <clears throat> something violating sexually. Yeah. yeah. Because the, okay. Harmony, you understand to put yourself in this kind of position at your age and to be focused on the ridiculous things you're thinking of now suggests that something really horrible happened to you. All right. But let me suggest this. Shouldn't it be more than one episode with the, bro I, with the sisters? There, I'm sure many more followers. What happened? How old were you when your sister's fiance got hold of you? You were 12. And then something, something happened before that. What happened before that? Nothing. My no. dad left. Huh? My dad left. Your dad mm -hmm. left at 9. But wasn't there a lot of chaos when your dad was there? Yeah, there's a lot of fighting. Yeah. Between your dad and your mom? Yeah. Did you ever have any sort of sexually inappropriate carrying on with your friends? No. Were you a virgin at the time? Uh, when I was with my sister's fiance? Yeah. Yeah, yeah until he had me. Right. Okay, and then what about after that? Yeah. There are more. More rapes, I'm sure. More rapes? No. More no. What? Here's what I'm here's what I'm trying to say, Harmony. You got a, a pretty chaotic life going for you. 
Yeah. And a mess. It's got to be more than just your f sister's fiance getting getting to you one time. Three times. Three times. Okay, first off, you have a sister who uh, agreed to marry a rapist, so there's something up with her, too. Right. She's not with her. Is that a UPN uh, sitcom? My yeah. uh, sister agreed to marry a rapist? Yeah, and, and the fact is that you were already a, a good victim by the age of 12, and dad leaving at nine doesn't just set you up for that, usually. You, something else had to be going on all along, early on, typically. I don't really remember my past. Right. Uh -oh. So we suspect, we suspect something heavy was going on there early. Well, there's a second problem to my story. Yeah? I don't know who the father of my second child is. I don't know if it's my husband or my boyfriend. Yeah, Harmony, this whole thing is a mess. And is Harmony your real name? Katie. Disharmony. Oh, okay. I was going to say, because that'd be sort of a gag. It's like calling a uh, fat guy Stretch or something. <laughs> oh. Harmony, have you ever been to a psychiatric hospital before? Me? Yeah. No. Do you do any drugs? I used to smoke weed and I used to drink okay. until I had my kids. Mm -hmm. uh, get focused on these children. I understand the way you're conducting yourself in relationships well, is going to be very damaging to your children. How pregnant are you now? Um, two weeks. Mm. Oh. How about uh, giving the kid up for adoption? No. Uh, here's my number one favorite answer on Love Line. Beside uh, why are you in prison, uh, parole violation. Why won't you give your kid up for adoption? Because that might be wrong for me to have a baby. She doesn't believe in it. And then have another baby and put that one up for adoption. Right. I just couldn't do it. Better, better you should just um, raise the kid in squalor and uh, have me and Drew pay for it. No. Or what are you going to do? I have a job. How are you going to keep your job and, and look after two infants? It's not going to be easy. Yeah. Well, it's going to be impossible. Well, my husband works during the day and I work during the night. Yeah, yeah, obviously. All right, so listen. Bob, please don't be cruel. Well, but she's got a boyfriend. Harmony, I would, I, I, see, if I was in charge, I would say that it would be tantamount to child abuse for Harmony to raise a child. Yes. Uh, especially a second child. I mean, Harmony's having difficulty raising herself. Unle right. Unless she really got her act together. No, I, I wouldn't way. even, I would just take the child away. Yeah. I would say, look, either either you, you have a choice. You either get an abortion or we just take the kid. You're 16. Yeah. Please, you're endangering. Who cares? You're, you're married. My you're, husband supports me and my children. Yeah, you're screwing you're, around with a 23-year-old guy. With another, another abuser, another uh, uh, jerk. And you're not using Criminal. protection. I mean... Please. You ever watch that Jerry Springer show? Yeah. Okay. You know how you make fun of those people? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They would make fun of you. Do you <laughs> understand that concept? I make my husband a better lover. That's not the uh, issue. Uh, that ain't no, it. No matter how great he is, you will yeah. not be able to maintain a stable relationship. You 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 seek chaos, and you're you're. Well, you're I can't you're, get rid of my boyfriend until I find out if this child is his or not. Why not? Why can't you get rid of him? Because if it's his child, then he's got to be in his life, his or her life. Mm -hmm. Do you think he's going to? Yeah. Do you think he cares about you, your boyfriend? Yeah. He does? I've been with him for two years. Your husband doesn't know? No. Is, uh, is your boyfriend have a, another girlfriend or a wife? No. As far as you know? As far as I know. He's not married. Uh-huh. Are you in love with your boyfriend? No, I'm not in love with him. Why, you, why have you been with him for two years when you just got married? I don't know. Wait a minute. How could you be? You're 16 years old? <laughs> right. 14 and 20. 14 and 21. All right. Wait a minute. Let me, let me just do some quick math here. You're 14 and he was 21 when you guys got together, the boyfriend? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you've been married for how long? Six months. So you were seeing this guy for a year and a half before you got married? Right. Why, why do you bother getting married? Because he's the father of my baby and I loved him. And I still love him. Uh-huh. How's senior year looking? Huh? If you love him, you don't even love him enough to give up your boyfriend. You don't love him enough to, to show him the slightest bit of respect. It's not the point of giving him up. If I knew that the baby wasn't his... Harmony? Then I'd give him Harmony. up. Harmony. What about the two years before you got pregnant? Right. <laughs> Please. Mm -hmm. Harmony, listen to me. I got nothing against you. If you want to um, live with your boyfriend and do... Or live with your... Whoever the hell you're living with and do whatever you want... I don't care. You go destroy your own life, do your own thing. It's just you have two kids, and one of those kids is going to kill Drew's kids in about 15 years. That's all I'm worried about. You understand that concept? Yeah. All right. So give the kid up for adoption, please. It'll be easier on you, and you're not being fair to the kid. Stop screwing around.
Parents that really, oh. really are willing to I sacrifice on behalf of their children will give the child up for adoption when they realize they're not capable of doing good, proper parenting. Right. Bob right. is going to like this idea. Bob, I had this idea some weeks ago. I, mm -hmm. I, as, as a country, we, we go take an island, maybe even uh, Australia. You know, we take some place. Then we may not need that much room, but we go just take some place. You know, we have the military mind. And then we get uh, Bill Cosby and Felicia Rashad <laughs> yeah. to take over the island. And then we take all the kids and we just dump them off there. Yeah. Like uh, this kid, uh, the, both kids in this case, would go be raised by Alicia. And, and the mom. Felicia Rashad. And, and the mom. Actually, we would have gotten hold of her a couple of years ago and right. dropped her off right. there. This never would have happened as she'd been living on. Uh, what are we going to call this place? Uh, Craptopia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Wing and Ding are here. Bobcat is here. Drew? Yeah. I'm here. Why don't, you, why don't you sell the hell out of the next call? We're going to talk to John yeah. about the signs of depression. Beauty. This is Love Line. Love Line will be right back. <laughs> Exclusively on Tucson's New Rock, 92.1 KFMA. On 92.1 KFMA. Hi, this is Rodney Dangerfield. I tell you, the guys here at Loveline are the greatest. They're the best, the best in the whole world. Now, will you please untie me? Yes, we will. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Wing, Ding, and Bobcat are here. All From Bobcat's big ass show. That's right. When's that on, Bob? It's on right now on FX. Yeah. Can we have a TV in here? <laughs> it's on FX every single night of the week. Right. And I like being on FX because uh, I've only had uh, one thing cut. For oh, really? Content wise, yeah. They just bleep my mouth, but you know, you still have a good idea what I'm saying. Yeah, because it's like the mother, one joke that got cut. There was this guy who was a real tool, and there's this portion of the show where I get to interview people, you know. And and this guy threw a drink on Ding, and I was very upset. Right. So his secret, I go, "What's your secret?" He says, "Well, I was rejected twice as a sperm donor." And I go, "Who's ass?" Uh. <laughs> that's the, so far, that's the only joke that's been cut, though. Everything else, it, it stays in. Hold on, Mike, dump that. You? <laughs> yeah, cut that, will you? Asshole. <laughs> Okay, that's, so that's good comedy, Bob. Why, well, you know, you th yeah, that's our target audience. That's, and you know, your ratings got to be good because you're sandwiched in between uh, the Fall Guy and uh, no, <laughs> I'm sandwiched in between yeah. in Living Color and X Files. I am the suddenly Susan of FX. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm the big. Uh, they're, they're ratings uh, winners, man. I'm I'm sandwiched in there. I am the cream they're, filling. They're big ass time slot. Right. Yeah. Right. Hey, you know, I know it's been said uh, a million times. I'm the first one to come up with this, but I was just th everyone close your eyes and think back to what cable was three just two three years ago. I mean, think about uh, Comedy Central and FX and ESPN and all these stations that are just huge now. Uh, I mean, MTV's been around for a long time, but for, for 10 years it was pretty much MTV and then it was back to the networks. Yeah. <sighs> I, I like the I like the FX. FX is very good to me. Okay. Yeah. Right. You'll be whistling a different tune in a month. John <laughs> yeah, when, I, when I pull Bill Maher and get a, a network deal, but oh, you know, that was that's a, what we're hoping. What were we talking about? A politically incorrect. Politically incorrect was fine. It was fine. Why did you do that? Uh, a couple of hours ago. Oh, today. really? Did it today? What yeah. Was, what that is, is the topic? That is a fun show. The topic, uh, I don't know. I, he looked at me for like some words of advice or to help him bail out, and I'd go, "Hey, dude, I'm I'm here to plug my show. <laughs> I'm not thinking." You didn't have no, I got in a debate with this woman about uh, 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 prayer in, in the uh, school, mm -hmm. and she goes, "Freedom of speech, freedom of speech," and I go, "It's got nothing to do with speech. You know, discussion is fine, but but we're talking about stopping the morning." And, and having a little uh, service, you know, for two and a half minutes. I go, you know, my kids are druids. You know, I don't expect the, the, the state to sanction two and a half minutes in a school to rip off their clothes and have them dance naked around trees. Right. <laughs> They're not really druids, but whatever. I, I certainly messed with this woman's head. My daughter, I was saying when we were on break, uh, she was at the TV taping for Loveline, and she goes, is, is Drew a real doctor? And I go, yeah. She goes, why is he wasting his time on TV then? Uh, I love that. Why is he wasting time with you guys? <laughs> yeah, well, that's well, that's what you read into it. Yeah, and I, I she thought just about saw it. you pissing a degree away. I thought about it for a minute and then realized her dad's been on TV since uh, the word go, and so so she thinks, uh, yeah, that yeah. any boob can be on. 
Right. I'm sure uh, Neil Armstrong's daughter just thinks he's some idiot who said, <laughs> <laughs> what's your dad do? Dad? It's some jarhead. He's an enlisted guy. He's never home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's always out of town. John? Yeah? You're 14. Mm-hmm. What's going on? Um, my friend, he says he's depressed, and he's supposedly a pathological liar, and I don't know whether to believe him or not. We should hook him up with Harmony. People who have real problems with lying often do have personality disorders and are at higher risk of depression then. So what, you uh, think he's really happy and he's lying about it? I don't know. Signs of depression at your age, John, would be a sudden drop in grades, truancy, violent behaviors, criminal behaviors, sexual acting out, just, just a, a change in behavior. Being sassy. Are you scared the guy's going to kill himself? Well, yeah. Is he saying that? No. All right, if he ever says that, take that seriously. Don't, don't assume he's lying. Don't assume he's seeking attention. When people your age talk about suicide, you're not in a position to make that judgment. Tell an adult. Chrissy. Yes. You're 19. Yes. What's going on? Um, i just broken up recently with my abusive boyfriend, and I'm having homosexual thoughts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So? <laughs> Ladies, you're on. You're on the radio. Why were you with? Why were you with an abusive boyfriend? Thumbs up, ding. Didn't really. Uh, yeah, well, why was. do you think you chose a guy who's abusive? Because he wasn't at first. Yeah, but you chose him. Why? I don't know. And I bet you hung in with him for a while too. Uh, eight months. With the abuse. <laughs> are you uh, Are you thinking about women just because uh, the last guy you were with was so abusive? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't. Or that the re-experiencing of the abuse originally perpetrated by dad is so overwhelming that you don't want to go through that again. No, no, no. What? There's no abuse from my dad. Mm, really? Really. What? So you're just thinking about switching teams? Your dad never, no one ever raised a hand to you? No. So why did you get hooked up with an abusive guy? Um, just something happened. It's over. And why did you stay with an abusive guy for so long? Just because it was kind of hard to get a relationship, I was scared and everything. Okay, so the, uh, you love your dad and there was never any uh, abuse perpetrated on you. He's a, a bit of an alcoholic. All right, Chrissy's... <laughs> what? I mean, and so what, what would he do when he... By the way, an intoxicated parent is a form of abuse of a child. That right. is a narcissistic injury to have an altered parent. But an intoxicated uncle's a good time. But what if he's a, you gotta admit that. What if he's a fun guy? What if he's like, That's you know, lampshades? But and... it still can be very disturbing. Right. But so what, what? What kinds of things did you witness? I want to do my Nixon impersonation for the family. Dad, Dad, I'm trying to sleep. No, one more karaoke number. What kinds of things did you did you experience when he was drinking? Um, he snorted. Just, What's no, that question? He would just leave all night and go drink, and he'd come home drunk. And what would he do when he came home? Nothing, just pass out. I mean, he didn't grow up, did eat nothing. pizza that's too hot. He what? He never did anything like that, though. Like what? He never abused me in any way. He never fought with your mom? Well, th my mom and dad divorced when I was like. He never struck your mom? I don't know. I was like three, and I don't think so. You got to do something when you're drunk. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Otherwise, actually, what's the he's use? He's a happy drunk. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is he still drinking? Yeah, sure. occasionally he's asleep right now. Have you thought about uh? Have you ha had you thought about uh, uh, joining the blue team before this? Uh, a little bit, not much, just a little bit. I think it was just like normal thinking. For right. Now, wing and ding, what do you make of this? Uh, you guys lesbians? Probably... No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, <laughs> only on the weekends. Maybe she's just curious. Oh, How old is she? Maybe you, she's nineteen. She's, yeah, nineteen. All right, so are we going to give her the green light to experiment? Uh, I can't make that call. Can you ding? Yeah. I think really? it's cool. Well, okay. at this point, I think uh, <laughs> ladies are better than men. I'm all for this yeah. because um, I've seen it in the movies, well documented, <laughs> and it's, uh, it's a beautiful act. But not <laughs> only that, no one gets pregnant, so I'm happy. You know what I mean? I mean, if you're going to take two screwed up people and they're going to have sex, you might as well then be two women. Because at least there's no uh, out, you, you know, there's no byproduct um, of that. Chris, I'm just concerned. I, I think you ought to take some time off from relationships altogether mm -hmm. and figure out what's up with you and why you would be with an abusive guy, why you're hanging with an abusive guy. Nurture yourself, figure out who you are, what your needs are, and make a very careful choice with your next Here's partner. my prediction. She gets drunk tonight and um, finds a lesbian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> James? Hey. You're 21. 
Bobcat, I think you're hilarious. Adam and Drew, you guys are awesome. Oh, thanks. Well, thanks. Um, my question, you guys mentioned earlier to uh, a guy, like, basically find out the laws around you about, like, statutory stuff. How do you find those out? They're in the front of the phone book. <laughs> right next to the seating chart, next to the you amphitheater. Gotta, you got to go into, like, the police station, and you go, well, Hey, I'm banging a 15-year-old. Is that cool? <laughs> that's, the, that's the fastest way. Well, I have the uh, age of consent in the United States uh, state-by-state state chart that Drew keeps taped to the back of his uh, Marks-A-Lot board. What state are you funny. concerned about, sir? Colorado. Colorado. 16. Okay. All right. <laughs> He's high five in somebody. Yeah, you're excited. Why holds your girlfriend? I don't have one. Just wondering. Uh, <laughs> but he's, he's on his way to, to the out. Art. Yeah, he's yeah. going to the carousel. Stay with 19 plus, please. No problem. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks. All right. Maine is uh, 14. Uh, Pennsylvania is 14. Uh, Iowa, you know, 14. Delaware's 12. And which, we got uh, to have these rechecked to make sure they're up to date for 98. Well, what what year do you think those were? Uh, Turn of the century. Yeah, they don't change. <laughs> was, uh, Dr. Quinn Medicine woman drew those up. <laughs> People only lived until their mid-20s when that was uh, conceived, Drew. All right, let's uh, see if we can get into one more call here for the break. Clarissa. Hello. You're 18. Yes. What's going on? All right, well, as you said, I'm 18 years old, and I'm terrified of any type of sexual intimacy. I've never had a decent relationship because of this, and I get nervous to the point of ending the relationship for anything. Why? What do you think? What is that coming from? Okay, well, my question is, I was wondering if this could be a symptom of sexual abuse from my youth that I blocked out, do you, or if yeah, you're, you're considered normal. It depends whether you're sexually abused or not. Right. right. I, I'm not big on uh, trying to cull out repressed memories. Mm-hmm. You either you remember it or you don't. Is your, your entire childhood blocked? Listen, if you don't remember it, who cares? Well, but the, you theory, know what I'm is, the theory is it could be deep-seated in your whole personality structure. Because I analyze myself like to an oblivion. And yeah, well... Like mm, part of it that I want to figure out what's going on. Well, anal- analyzing oneself is a form of defense by itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that, that therapy and, and sort of emotional growth does not... Just work by analysis. I agree with Drew. It's best to pay a stranger to analyze you. No, but it's not about. It's mm-hmm. not so much about analysis as much as having an experience in the presence of another person and, and experiencing yourself in a relationship with another person in a controlled fashion. All right. Well, mm-hmm. listen. I, I'll tell you what. We'll go to break, and then uh, Clarissa, mm-hmm. I will determine whether you were sexually abused or not. Are you psychic? No. It'll based it on your present you. present day behavior. But I play a uh, sexual <laughs> knucklehead on TV, so I think that gives me carte blanche. Okay. All right. So all just... right, we're gonna get back to Clarissa when we go away. And uh, what else? Anything else? No. Yeah. Sell the hell. Big ass show. I'll sell the hell on the next call. We have a uh, sniper who's into bestiality, and uh, our big ass show is uh, winding down. So catch the last four minutes on FX. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Everybody now. Exclusively on Tucson's New Rock, 92.1 KFMA. here from uh, Bobcat's Big Ass Show, or Bobcat's Pile of Show, as Drew and Bob like to call it. Wing and Ding are both here. Fabulous Wing and Ding. Yeah. They're uh, oh, hello. co-stars of the show, and uh, we're going to take ourselves a little 10-second break, and we'll be right, right back. back. 92.1 KFMA, Green Valley, Tucson. Oh, It is Loveline. Grantley Buffalo will be in here tomorrow night. And um, Ariana Huffington, speaking of uh, politically cor- incorrect, I think she's on that show quite a bit. She's uh, one of our go-go dancers on the Big Ass Show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> she comes in and shakes her money makers. She is a hottie. <laughs> uh, she's real funny and real smart. 
and has a uh, kind of a cool accent, so uh, we'll get into that. I'm not totally sure what she did, but wasn't her was her husband Mike Huffington? Yeah, was that his name? We're trying to figure he spent out all the money Some on the campaign. Politician. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Was he running for governor of California? Uh, King Sanders, wasn't it? I don't know what. He I don't even know what out. happened He's, to him. He, he, he soaked a lot of lettuce into it, and uh, he he didn't get it. God, could you imagine? You know, I, I was talking uh, to somebody about uh, this campaign, and there's this one guy who sunk like $80 million into his uh, into his campaign, and they said the advertising was, he's not a politician, he's a businessman. And I thought to myself, uh, you put $80, $80 million into potentially getting a job that pays seventy nine k a year? That's not a good businessman, uh, by the way. And by the way, I saw a lot of ads that kept saying, he's not a politician but he's running for lieutenant governor. And I thought to myself, after about the 15th commercial for the same guy for lieutenant governor, I think that makes you a politician. <laughs> F, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm yeah. not a politician either, but I don't buy commercial space. Bobcat Well, is, he couldn't have an ad. He's not a politician, but he's a big dummy. <laughs> they just lost $80 million. I was saying on the morning show, Bob, that I think if I was running an $80 million campaign, I would save at least $5 million for some television spots that I would run after the election. Yeah, it says, oh, you know what? Maybe I am a businessman. Well, just in case I lost, there's the big kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> kiss my ass campaign. I hope you all rot in hell and moving to Canada. <laughs> All right, so uh, Bobcat, Wing and Ding are uh, both here, and uh, Heather's 15. Heather? Hi. And by the way, we lost that other caller. What other caller? The one, oh, the the one we saw. The, the, uh, the one that we were teasing everyone with. Uh, Heather? Yeah. What's going on with you? Okay, as you know, I'm 15, and I have a boyfriend that is um, 27. Mm. Oh, that's healthy. Yay! How old, <laughs> Yay for us. How old do you think Bobcat is? What, you trying to hook me up? <laughs> Mother of Pearl. Hmm? 39. 39. All right, I'm going to write that down. Hey, Heather, what's your question? Is that wrong at all for me to be going out with the twins? Uh, you are... 15. Uh, putting yourself uh, into the lion's den as a, as a just an absolute victim to be plucked. This, this is the 27-year-old. You're not crazy. The 27-year-old is a... I don't have strong enough words to describe the guy. Weirdo. Uh, yeah. Disturbed, I suppose, is a word, but but a, a, a criminal. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, you're not in a position to judge someone like that. I know it's very flattering to have an older guy interested in you, but a 27 year old that would do this is is a is a is a criminal. Yeah. Did he have a series that just went up there? <laughs> a, a reprehensible person. <laughs> Who should be in jail? I was going to say, unless he's a director, this is um, yeah, this is right. inappropriate behavior. Right. <laughs> oh. Where'd you meet this guy? Um, I'd rather not say. Oh, come on. What's he do for a living? Radio. No, no. He's he, yeah. at school. Um, actually, I met him at the mall. At the mall. And uh, was he dressed as Santa? <clears throat> no. No. Uh, and what do you do? Just come up and start talking to you? He says, I can give you free orange Juliuses. <laughs> <laughs> No, actually, me and my friend started chatting with him and his friends. Uh-huh. Or hanging out at the mall. Yeah. yeah. This is a guy with a lot of direction in his life. Right. Uh, there's two guys. I've now, I've now um, wa broadened my list of men who hang out uh, at the mall. It's not only gay guys, it's pedophiles. Mm. Right. Was uh, he in, like, a seniors walking club? Why, why, uh, you know, it's always a, curious to us why these guys could see such clear victims and why they know who they can get away with this crap with and who they can't mm -hmm. what has led you to be such a good victim for him in, i have in, no idea in your life why would you think it's okay to date a guy that's 27 while your friends are telling you not such a good idea personally i think he's nice and yeah but what happened to you all right let me get to the bottom of this drew first off he may be a young 27 <laughs> um let's see where's your dad my father is asleep. Mm -hmm. And uh, does he drink or beat you or do anything like that? He does drink, but he has never laid a hand on me. Mm -hmm. And uh, does he beat your mom up? No, my mother does not live with me. Mm -hmm. What's up with your mom? Um, actually, she cheated on him about five years ago, and then they separated. Mm -hmm. and what, how, how did that all go down? Five years ago when this guy was 22 and you were 10? I, I didn't know him back then. I've only known him for about a year. How long have you been going out? Um, about a year. Oh, wow. Ooh. Maybe you yeah. could hook him up with your mom. Are you, are you having oh. sex with him? No, 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 no. 
I know this um, sounds sick. Hold on a second, Hannah. I trust this guy less that he's not having sex with her. Right. I, I mean, is pathetic. <laughs> right. I, and, Drew, I know you do agree with this retarded logic, although you hate to admit it, but here's a 26-year-old a, a year ago dating a 14-year-old, mm -hmm. and he's not, he's not even having sex. He's, they're just dating. I know. Right. I know. For Christ's sake. I mean, it, it doesn't, it doesn't that uh, speak Taking her out to fancy restaurants. Yeah. <laughs> whining and dining in her. Right. Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't that speak of some sort of um, retarded uh, state that he's in? I remember like our first day when we went to see Slappy and the Stinkers. <laughs> <laughs> five well, kids, I've, one sea lion. No had rules. I've had to sit through that like oh, five times. Yeah, well, it holds <laughs> up. Slappy and the Stinkers? Oh, yes. Five kids. It's my kid's favorite film. One sea lion, no <laughs> rules. <laughs> I, did, I saw it first in the theater. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, they cute. rented something called Slappy and the Stinkers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bet you did. Is <laughs> F.M. Bradley the big black guy in there? <laughs> No. Who played Slappy? <laughs> I think Ron Jeremy played Slappy. <laughs> Heather? <laughs> uh, so you haven't had sex with him? No. But do you make out and stuff? Yes. And what do you do? What is a what is a normal evening? Does he does he have an apartment? And... They drive to Maine. <laughs> what, what happens? What do you mean? I mean, he comes and picks you up? Yes. What's your dad think of this? Mm -hmm. My dad is normally asleep by 4 o'clock. Oh. So he doesn't know about it? No. Does your dad get loaded and just fall asleep? Just about, yeah. Does he work nights or is he narcoleptic? Um, he works until about 3.30 in the afternoon. Then he comes home mm -hmm. and falls asleep. Mm -hmm. Drinks until he falls asleep. And then Warren Beatty picks you up. Uh, what? Are, are you a virgin? What? A what? Are you, are you a virgin? Yes, I am. Okay. So I, I wonder, um, I'm trying to figure out what his agenda is. I know what your agenda is, Heather, which is your dad's basically, a, when he's not boozing, he's napping, and you're looking for a dad, and you found one right. in this uh, guy at the mall. Of this course, almost, this please. Almost, this almost creeps me out to the point where I wonder if he's, like, grooming her for some weird, oh, yeah. really That's weird thing scary. here. Some you know? John Derrick kind of? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Some, uh, no, no, no. Some, like, Harvest? <laughs> what are you what talking, are you talking about? about? Some, uh, some, some real, I mean, you some know, really. Some like real lambs kind of thing. Right. Ooh. It's, ooh, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Maybe I mean, this is ooh, such I'm a scared. weird situation. I think he's just socially retarded and possibly gay and Does he have friends? Himself. Does this guy have uh, peers, other 27-year-olds that he hangs out with? That date 14-year-olds. Oh, he's going to get her into something real weird. I just I know. Know. You guys are going to be on a killing spree in about two years. That's yeah. great. That's great. Well, you got that to look for him. Heather, <laughs> uh, what do you guys talk about? I mean, it, is he a nice guy? Yeah, he is. What does he do for a living? Yeah. He is a construction worker. Oh, oh. that's a strike right there. Uh -huh. I've worked with <laughs> these guys. Yeah, I'm here, no stranger to. Uh, I know. Uh, I know what these guys are like. He doesn't weld, does he? I don't know. Okay. Uh, Heather, this is, not, this is criminal behavior that he's uh, engaging in. Although, I don't know if it is not criminal officially. because he's not having yeah. sex with you. Not officially. But again, I, I, again mm -hmm. I look at that as stranger than having sex uh -huh. because at least he has some sort of agenda. Right. A, a sick agenda, granted, but, a, but an agenda. Are you interested in any guys your age? Yeah, but. Well, so. Why don't you go ahead and have a relationship with those guys? Yeah, yeah the most are my assholes. Yeah, but believe me, better to date an asshole than a pedophile uh, possible uh, you know why you wait uh, four killer. years this guy will be around <laughs> if he really cares about you <laughs> and uh and keep your uh, virgin status with this tool i mean stay a virgin mother of pearl yeah. where's your mother speaking of the pearl <laughs> <laughs> my mother lives in southern california mm -hmm. and do you have any contact with her um we talk over the phone but i haven't been able to see her in about a year mm -hmm. why uh, um I guess that she's not really financially stable. I think what you should do is uh, tell your dad about this guy. What, what, what do you think your dad would do? Kill him. I yeah. kill me? No, no. He'd kill... As a dad, I know that this guy <laughs> wouldn't be around much longer. Uh, Bobcat, how old is your uh, oldest daughter? I only have uh, one, and so she's 11. <laughs> well, the question still works, kind of, doesn't it? My oldest daughter, my one daughter, yeah. Oh, it's 11. Yeah. All right, so she's not, she's not, uh, I knew she wasn't 15, but well, I was wondering her if she was creeping with a, up with, on this. With a 26-year-old. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, she is... already knows. I mean, it's already been laid out. Oh. You told you to kill any guy that 
No, I will kill anybody that breaks your heart. Aw. Uh, Dad. All right, so our advice to Heather, our she's overwhelming gonna, advice is to get out of this. I think she's going to yeah. test that. Drew, too. is that bad? Is that bad no, putting I, that I out have, there? I, I just have a feeling that she's going to test you and make sure you can actually deliver on that that promise. Oh, she, there's tapes of me starting fires on national <laughs> TV shows. I don't think she's, she believes I'll come through with my threats. Mary. Yeah. Mary, you're 16. Yeah. What's going on? Um, I have a boyfriend, and, and um, he... Hold on one second. Oh, Mary, hold on a second. Don't start crying. Just hold on. Hey, Drew, mm -hmm. I'm going to shift gears here because I just looked up at the screen, and it uh, looks like uh, Mary's got a boyfriend, and she's uh, sleeping with some married guy. And, Drew, I know you've only been doing the show a, a, a scant 16 years, mm -hmm. but we've been taking the same call. Call after call. Oh, nice. Go ahead. Yeah. That's what's up there. Hi, welcome what do you to mean, that's what's up there, well, the you jackass. The, are, I'm looking at all these, these other are, calls. These are medical questions. Then you'll say, hey, question for Bobcat. Hey, hey welcome. You already answered it. Welcome to jailbait. <laughs> I'm talking to this We're guy. We're answering all your jailbait calls. Zena. Zena. It's Zena, but. Zena, sorry. It's right. Um, actually, um, my first comment was for Adam and Dr. Drew. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to thank you guys for doing the show. Wait, what are we doing with the, the, the girl who was in tears? We just blew her off? She can wait. She'll be fine. Aww. Okay. I'm more important right now. Yes, yes. you are. Uh, okay, I just wanted Warrior to tell Dr. Princess. Drew and Adam that they're doing a really good thing because I've learned a lot from the show. Oh, good. Yeah. So thank you. And Bobcat, um, I met you in Denver at the, at the radio station. We talked in the lobby about the Aquabats and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. I do remember meeting you. Okay. Um, well, you have been one of my favorite comedians, like, since I was, like, really young. How old so, do you think Bobcat is? I don't want to guess because I don't, don't want to insult him. No, go I'll ahead. Go ahead. Mm, I'm going to say 41. Okay, oh, good. That's I'm sorry. Good. We were just jawboning together. Yeah, good. that's close. <laughs> okay, and, um... You were working with bands, too. Yeah, I am, actually. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I remember. Okay, um... Well, I, I just wanted to thank you because it was, like, a, a good experience meeting you. From like liking you forever and then me. Oh, uh, you just caught me on a good day. Usually, <laughs> yeah. usually I crush it right out of him. I met him and he was a real a hole. <laughs> no. Did he fart on you? Uh, I, no, he I just said that for you, lovely wing. <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> and I wanted to congratulate you for your show and stuff. I've been watching it every day. I've just finished watching it and I like it actually. It's really cool. Oh, I like your thanks. your costumes. <laughs> Yeah, if well, that. yeah, that's quite the apparel I'm, I'm wearing on that show. Is Julie doing your costumes, too? No, no, really it's uh, Robin uh, Robin LeBeau does a great job. Yeah, she's Although I've got a lot of pimples from all the polyester. <laughs> Zena? Yeah. Are you done reminiscing with Bob? Well, sure. Oh, you, did you have a question? Not for you guys. I okay. I have well, a pretty good life, so... No, I'm, I'm in a... <laughs> I've got a question for Bobcat uh, well, I, about the oh. Aquabats or something. Okay, um, actually, I wanted to know when the Aquabats thing was coming out, like the, the TV show thing you guys are doing. Aren't they well, doing a, you're doing a morning show, right? No, we're doing, a, right now we're doing a, a pilot presentation, as they say in the business, and uh, we'll see if, uh, we'll see if it gets picked up. No, but, presentations come before pilots, don't they? I don't know what you want to call this thing. for a pilot. Yeah, they're nah, doing a but, pilot presentation. Uh, Oh, you do a presentation to see if you can you get, get a pilot, pilot right? Right. 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 right? Yeah, but... Uh, we did a presentation on Bobcat's show and went right into film. Boom! So. Yeah. yeah, but you had a big name attached. Bobcat? Who what? Wing? Who, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think that one out. There was no sarcasm in Wing's voice. Bobcat? That's a big name? <laughs> well, <laughs> Tiffany, did you honestly know anything about me before the show? Sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, How old do you think you he is? You didn't recognize I me. Told we you. know, we know him, oh, okay. so... Okay, don't ruin it for everyone then. <laughs> All right, I, I was just saying that when I was a kid growing up, there were morning shows like the Hudson Brothers. Yeah, yeah, Razzle Dazzle. A bunch of nutty guys mm -hmm. doing their thing. Sure. And now it's a lot of animated stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I would think we want to we want to bring back be a good time. We go back to the old school tapes. We look at like uh, you know Land of the Lost and Sid and hey, Marty Crop. Yeah. We go Sasquatch. We've got to bring this kind of cheesiness back to TV. Totally. That's what we're going for. Absolutely. Yeah. The budgets are too big in TV these days. We well, need to go back. We don't to have the that days. problem on the big ass show. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I know, you're using our set. We're using your set, and we stole uh, the back of Keenan's set. That's right. Oh, really? They were throwing that out. We go, whoa, 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 whoa. That's still good. Just clean it off. <laughs> That's true. Uh, what about the weepy girl? I'm worried about her. Oh, oh yeah. That's I thought right. I was answer this one first. Right. Okay. Really? All right. Uh, I was on a cell phone for 81 minutes. Oh, God. Uh, Matthew's 24. Uh, what's going on, Matthew? Uh, the drug that I'm taking 
uh, is uh, intramuscular, and it's uh, one of your favorite steroids. Mm. And uh, I've been taking it for about a month, and I'm interested in knowing what the side effects are as far as uh, heart conditions later on down the what road. Are you, what are you taking it for? Is it medicinal, or is it to be ripped? Uh, to get bigger. Oh, right. don't do that. <laughs> All right, so what was the drug? Um, you know, I, I gave the lady the name. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. All right. Well, how did you pronounce it when you gave it to the lady? Uh, I spelled it out for her. Hey, what's going on with you since you know, you've been the, taking this? The, bottle, the bottle's in Spanish, so. Okay. Oh. Great. Right. Always right, a well, bad sign, the by the way. Yeah. All right. Well, the, these, first of all, there's a l tremendous amount of cross addiction between steroids and stimulants. So uh, it tends, is a very common syndrome of uh, st stimulant addicts using steroids. So sort of look at that very carefully. People then become addicted to how they feel and look on the drug, whether or not they are truly an addict, or they just sort of become dependent on that uh, aspect of the drug. Sometimes when you stop using it, you can fall into severe depressions. I've lost a couple of patients to suicide with that. Uh, as you, I'm sure you're aware, it can be very damaging to the liver. Uh, various liver disorders can develop. Yeah, but they look liver, good. Peliosis yeah. of the liver. Uh, it elevates your blood pressure, alters your blood lipids, can increase your risk of stroke. Heart All right, the arteries, that's enough. It's oh, bad for you, but well, let me, kidney failure. He I mean, does, he's, it's falling on deaf ears. I've I got to talk to Wing and Ding here. Right. Yeah. And tell me if this isn't true. Go. You women, you don't want a big, burly, muscle-bound guy. No. You like a guy like who looks like yeah. he's in good shape. Right. Yeah. Maybe Lean. a swimmer, maybe a cross country yeah, skier. Yeah, yeah. Somebody runs or something, but not a big blow up toy. Looks like a right. dork. They look uncomfortable. Right. It's like, ugh. I think and guys. Their pants look terrible. Guys who get real yeah. big, they get real big for their bodies more than they do yeah. for women. Right. Because the only kind of women you're going to attract if you're big are bigger, other bodybuilders. Right. Or women with real big hair. Exactly. <laughs> Sprayed bangs. Right. Right. Yeah. Big right. muscles attract big hair. It's true. Right. Right. I don't like muscles. And look at all the guys in the world that are getting uh, the uh, lion's share of the poontang. They're not big. No. They're not big muscle-bound guys. Not even. The not what? Even. Lion share? <laughs> lion share of the poontang. The poontang. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. look at all the, uh, you know, George Clooney's of the world or whoever these... Uh, who Woody are Allen. <laughs> Leo DiCaprio. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was watching this. I was watching this thing on, on like extra, and they had Leo's romp on the beach, and uh, Leo looked like me when I was thirteen. He looked like Felix Unger, his yeah. body was awful. <laughs> yeah, this guy, this guy looks like um, uh, the uh, Stay Puft Marshmallow Man with like, uh, on a diet. Like, he looks like <laughs> Casper with James Dean's head. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, working out's good, but too big is yeah. Uh, right. Just work yeah. out. Right. Right. Yeah. Work out. Lay off the roids. Yeah. Although, how big is he? If the guy's really cut, uh, I don't want to be uh, pissing uh, him off too much. Okay. Come down here and clean my clock. Mary? <laughs> yeah? You're 16. Yeah? Now, you were crying when we spoke to you about uh, eight minutes ago. No, I... You just I have to be quiet. Oh, are you on the phone being real quiet? Yeah. Okay. Oh. What, okay. Now, what's your problem? We're, we're going to try to address it as expedient as possible. Um, well, I met this... Guy married and everything a couple weeks ago, and we started doing stuff, and I ended up sleeping with him. And I don't know if I should tell my boyfriend because he'll be really mad at me. Mm -hmm. uh. Did you use protection? Yeah. Uh. Uh. Did you use protection? Yeah. You sure. Yeah. What'd you use? A condom. Uh huh. What kind? Um, a Trojan. Mm, all right. And uh, where'd you meet this guy? Um, we met at, at the mall. No, <laughs> we met at one of my cousin's house. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And what what kind of? How old was this guy? Um, my cousin's nineteen. No, no the guy. The guy. Oh, the guy. He's twenty two. <sighs> Boy, there's oh, twenty two. I never get over that quality in people. I know. <laughs> uh, the house, the house was built in 1954, <laughs> so that would make it, uh, what, 40, uh, 44, 43 <laughs> years old? Every time you ask him there, it becomes who's on first. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, these pedophiles <laughs> have some crazy ages nowadays. Uh, Mary, um, <clears throat> don't tell your boyfriend. How's your relationship no. with the boyfriend been so far, otherwise? Um, pretty good. Is, yeah. he, is he a little, is he not treating you right? Yeah, he is. He's really sweet. Why would you choose to do this sort of thing? I don't know. How old is he? My boyfriend's 16. Listen Aww. to her voice. I know she yeah. sounds like she's 12. She's just tiny. Yeah. That's a bad sign, by the way. Snuggles yeah. the uh, fabric softener bears calling up. <laughs> we've, uh, we've learned 
<laughs> yeah, he's pissed. <laughs> That's usually a sign of some developmental arrest. Uh, something, something happened to you, uh, Mary, when you were younger? No. Mm -hmm. Nothing, uh... Something. When did you lose your virginity? Um, when I was 15 and a half. Really? Six months ago. You know, when a, a half figures in, it usually means you're young. <laughs> a, uh, an old spinstress by Loveline standards. Mm -hmm. Mary, nothing before that? No. No abuse, no nothing? No. Okay. All right, so you just decided to have sex with this 20-something-year-old uh, guy, mm -hmm. even though you like your boyfriend and everything's working out pretty good with him. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're just an idiot, right? <laughs> That's all? Uh-huh. Okay. All right, well, you didn't need us to tell you that. Yeah. All right, stop being an idiot, okay. and uh, don't tell your boyfriend. Okay. But don't screw around anymore. No. Uh -huh. Hey, did your boyfriend screw around on you? Not as far as I know. Huh? Not as far as You don't have any suspicion that he did anything like that? No. Why are you getting back at your boyfriend? <laughs> what did he do? Nothing. He did something. No. Of course he did. Well, uh, Mary, why can't we get a straight answer out of you? Everything is funny. These are not funny circumstances. Well, I, I have been known up. to be humorous at times. Drew. Not That's about not... this. <laughs> they either either you, you are really not being honest with yourself at all about what is going on here, or you're lying. No. Okay. So your boyfriend has never fooled around with any of your friends or done anything like that? No. Never raised a hand to you, and he's been nothing but a gentleman? No. Yes? Yeah, he's really sweet and everything. Okay, so you're taking a, a nice, uh, wonderful, caring, giving boyfriend and stabbing him in the well, back. I mean, she may be sabotaging a relationship. That's okay. certainly possible, too. But, again, in either case, it smacks of something going on here. Right. Something All right, happening. don't tell him, Mary. Okay. All right, good luck with your life. Okay. Of course she wants to don't tell him. Don't get pregnant. She, she has to destabilize Of course she wants to tell him. Right. Listen, I don't trust anybody who wants to tell anybody anything. <laughs> There's always an agenda. Every time uh, this happens where you have some 15-year-old calling, they go, mm -hmm. I'm gay and I want to announce it to my family. And we go, why do you want to tell your family? And they go, I, I just feel like I should be uh, living a, a life uh, free of, of this uh, deception, so on and so forth. What do you think your dad hate his guts? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, right. What do you think he would do if he found out he was gay? He'd hit the ceiling. Right. Beautiful. Oh, wow. He just found a great... Reaction. Now you're not truthful. Right. You're, I mean, you're being truthful, but that's just a byproduct of trying to reason. screw somebody. Yeah. Emotionally. Well. All right. Yeah. All right. You only tell when you think you have to, and even then, you downgrade. You go to hand job, you work your way up to oral sex. <laughs> mm -hmm. So how do you downgrade I'm gay? You say, uh... Bye. Start with bye. Start with bye. Uh -huh. Or you just go, boy, uh, I sure enjoy bike pants. Well, <laughs> you go, you do what I did with my family, which is, I'm gay, but I play the man. Uh, that, that, that's, that's good, good. yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. that's that good. way Dad could feel good about it. Right, right. All right. Uh, Pitching we're, or catching? We're going to let uh, Wing and, uh, in the bullpen. We're going to let Wing and Ding go. Bobcat's going to stay. And then uh, uh, Tony's, Tony's also coming on out. He's part of the big-ass show every night on FX. Every single night, seven days a week. What time? 10.30. Uh, beauty. Yeah. All right. Okay. The phone number for Loveline is 1-800-LOVE-191. Loveline, I'll be right back. Loveline, phone number 1 800 L V E 191. Grantley Buffalo being here tomorrow night. I got to tell you, Grantley. Uh, Loring. What? Huffington. Oh, uh, Ariana Huffington. Ariana Huffington, sorry. Grantley Buffalo is a, is a band name that I've heard for 10 years, and I couldn't name a song that they do, but I well, know they're supposed they've to never be good. played with UFO <laughs> or Head East. I like UFO. I know you do. <laughs> There's a thin line between Overdrive. being a friend of yours and uh, a fan of the show and a stalker. But Bob, and we do I was, appreciate don't you think I wasn't to the show. Uh, don't think I wasn't tempted to buy you the uh, the whole uh, U UFO bootleg uh, uh, set for your for your birthday. <laughs> like, did you open uh, my gift? Yeah, I did. Nice little bottle of. Uh, uh, you, uh, Crown Royal? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, the tequila. tequila. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. There you go. I got my booze confused. No, I was the card that said ass face. Yes, now I know. <laughs> now you know. Again. Are you listening to my tapes, by the way? Oh, uh, your uh, books on uh, cassette? Yes. Stretch with... Adam. Uh, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Well, I started with Moby Dick, and, and well, I, 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 I I've been listening for like 400 miles, and I haven't even mentioned the whale yet. Uh, go to Drew, the, what are these? Uh, you got the kids listening to these? No, Adam, <laughs> yeah, we got to expose Adam to some 
connect, make, make him connected with the Western world somehow. So he won't read. Right. Read so, the biography of God, or listen to that. That's good. Okay, I'll listen to Please. that. Tony you, V. You will love that thing, too. Tony V. is here. Tony is uh, Bob's sort of uh, right-hand man on uh, Bobcat's big-ass show. Oh, and in life, too. <laughs> yeah. he, is, he is my yeah. Jilly, too, my <laughs> Frank. <laughs> and uh, you, how long have you known true. Tony? Since I was 18. Yeah. And it, really? Doing stand-up comedy in Boston, we were the two new guys, the loser guys at the open mic that no one would talk to, you know, with paper bag lunches. But you got on, like, Letterman by 19 or something, 20, didn't you? 20, yeah, but I'd started doing stand-up when I was 15, but I was in uh, New York, and I moved down to Boston when I was uh, 18, and I met Tony. Jesus Because no one would talk to us. No we had the big scarlet either. L's on our head. And uh, you got Tony in on this project? Big-ass show? Yep. Yeah, Tony's on the show. Tony went... Our game show, uh, uh, the losers get punished. Right. So like, if you lose, you, you'll have to, you know, wax Tony's bikini area. Or, right. Uh, it's coming up. Give him a pedicure. Uh, one show I spanked somebody with a fish. Dead fish. A dead fish. Right. We have to stress that no animals right. were injured during the taping mm -hmm. of Bobcat's Big Ass Show, people except the have, ones we ate for lunch. Right. <laughs> and people have been hooked up to my uh, butt <laughs> uh, wearing a gas mask while I eat a can of beans. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, now, now you're in Adam's now house. Now we're yeah. talking. <laughs> now we're talking we, highbrow. All of a sudden he woke up. Highbrow. Good, yeah. <laughs> we had the, uh, yeah, we yeah. invented the butt bong specifically yeah. for Bobcat's Big Ass Show. And then uh, one night I couldn't think of anything at all creative to do with them, so I just smacked the woman over the head with a bottle. But I go, hey, Tony, what are you doing? I lose this. Uh, can't think of anything. I'm just going to crack her over the head with a bottle. And it was breakaway break glass break, and everything. Right, but, but, but the woman ends up being. Sold it. Because it's Los Angeles, she's a stunt woman, oh. of course. Right. And uh, she sold the hell sold out of it. it. Big time, and we got in all kinds of trouble. You just can't go around smacking people with people bottles. Because she went, ah, and then oh. took the fall. Right. Drew? Yeah. You ready to rock on uh, here? I'm still back at the butt bomb. Tony's a little mad because Entertainment Weekly described him as a goon. A big goon. <laughs> big goon. Oh, sorry. Isn't that what you play on TV? A big goon, yeah. I'm that not a big goon, but I play one on TV. No, right. Not in real life. I'm just big. Marianne. Yes. You're 19. Yes, I am. Go right ahead. <laughs> Can't help. Uh, you guys are great. Thanks. I've never um, seen Bobcat Show, but I think I should start watching it. Great. FX, yeah. uh, 1030 every night. I know. I missed it tonight, but tomorrow. All right. Um, I just just been listening tonight, and I felt compelled to call because I have been where these young girls have been, and it's not pretty. I was 13, lost my virginity to a 22-year-old. Uh, and let me stop you there. Did, did you not have a fantasy that this was the guy you were going to marry? Oh, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. I had, like, dreams about, yeah. like, my wedding dress. Oh, my oh, God. Just, so what happened? And it's ridiculous. Like, I, I don't know what I was thinking. And everything he did to me was wrong. You know, every part of our relationship was wrong, but I didn't see that. Well, he's a sick guy. Totally. I mean, you're not the and sick. Like, you're the victim. He's the he's the sicko. And I think these people's pictures should be plastered on milk cartons. I agree with you. Because they are disgusting. It's inappropriate. That's why we have these laws. That, absolutely. You know, to protect it, the it's women. It's considered child molestation. Yeah. Well, it's not considered. It is. Where did yeah. you... Uh, but why were you in a position at 13 to have sex Adam with one of Adam wants to make you guys? sick now, too. So Are you guys going to try and get into my deep, dark tent? Well, no. We're assuming... That there's always some reason that right. you, you become right. a no, good victim. I, I agree. Well, um, what was your reason? Let's see. I, I think maybe uh, my parents getting divorced yeah. That that could be it. I like I had a great childhood, but when I think a lot of especially young women when they hit adolescence, they um, their parents don't know how to deal with them, and I don't think my mom really knew how to deal with me, so she just stopped. Oh, she just gave up. She abdicated. Pretty much. Pretty yeah, abdicate. American parents tend to abdicate their role with teenagers, and that's a, it's a very destructive thing to do. Right. But right. there already was something going on, right, to make you a tough teenager. Um, I think so. What was going on? I think. Let's see. Well, well, where did Dad go after the divorce? Um, he still stayed in town. He just was never emotionally available. All right. Just All right. never really and now you, you, talk, you, never, you know, said anything besides hello and goodbye. Were you aware of that then or just now aware of that? Um, I think I was aware of it then, but it did, I, I didn't couldn't matter. articulate it yeah. like that. Yeah. I how, would just get angry. That how long did you date the 22-year-old guy and what mall did you meet him at? Um, it was actually at a softball game at the high school. Like, what are these older men doing at, high, at you know, high well, school? The teaching gym. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, they got to work. This is their yeah, social. Uh, this oh. is their their social pool. Right. Yeah, and we dated. We dated for three years, and 
I've, now, did he do that maneuver where I do where I heat up a Rolo, I uh, <laughs> put it on the end of my penis and stick it through the chain link fence and just wait? It was close. It was a peppermint patty. Oh. <laughs> See, uh, she saw your riff and uh, upped it. <laughs> she certainly did. I like, I like your sass. I, I listen to you guys all the time. I know how you guys work. <laughs> so right. how old are you now? Please don't include me in that you guys. No, no, oh, no! I know please. how you are too, and I, I respect that. Thank you. But well, you, you know what you don't see is Drew laughing. You know, what I mean, Drew, Drew sits there and he does the the Muttley laugh. He goes, <laughs> right away from the mic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, remember that time we had the, uh, last week when you're on here, uh, I think it was a couple months ago, and we had that amputee call in, and oh, Drew and was laughed. like, uh, in stitches. He's besides himself. Right. He's besides himself. So, how old are you now? I'm 19. And and when did you wise up about this? Uh, with I this guy? um, it was my senior year of high school, and I unfortunately had to learn the very hard way, and um, I got pregnant. Oh, oh. you dated a guy from 13 to 17? Seven. Yeah, Four, yeah. 16. Uh. I, I don't, especially you know, a girl in this position gets defensive if her family finds out about it. And, you know, all she can do is defend the guy. Right. You know, and they just get stuck in this vicious cycle. Well, that's why that's why we have such trouble getting through to them. So it's really right. important that you call and share your experience because that's and, much more impactful than anything we can say. And let me just tell all the girls out there, there are really decent guys. I've met a man, like a man, like a, a real, you know, 18-year-old, my version of a man, you know, and we have a great relationship. We talk about normal things. We go to the movies, you know, and he's... It's a functional relationship, and you can't, being stuck in the position that they are, they're not going to, you know, this, see how bad the guy is. This guy dated you from, he was 22 when you were 13, and then you were 17, and you know, he was uh, 26. 26? Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh. All right, and uh, did did he ever get put behind bars or anything? Uh-huh. Oh, oh good. Oh, he was, he had everything crappy going for him. He, he was no good. No good. All right. And there is light beyond this. You don't, this isn't, um, you know, it wasn't, there are better times. Oh, yes. they're, they're, we need to form some kind of a support group for, for parents of young teenage girls. Uh, you can start the group, and I'll come in in a couple of years. I'll be a guest lecturer, me and Tony V. Yeah, I'll come in. I, here's what I think. I think any guy that treats young women like that, you should come see me. Uh, <laughs> smack him in the throat with a walleye trout. But you're not a goon. And it won't be one of those breakaway no, walleyes either. It'll be a real walleye trout. That's what. Sometimes I, that's the answer. So did uh, did you dump him or did nope. he dump you? We got rid of her. Oh, Adam, Adam dumped her. Okay, no. Tony. Uh, did, I'm still here. Okay. All right, let's Drew. Let's uh, see if we can squeeze it. <laughs> <laughs> that's Tony's in my relationship. Tony, I'm still here. Liz. Hi. You're 21. Yep. You're on with Bob and uh, Tony. Uh, hi, Bob. Hi, Tony. Hello. Hey. Um, well, I just kind of, um, I have this friend, and she's a really close friend of mine, and we've been friends for, like, eight years, and about, oh, two and a half weeks ago or so, um, I noticed that she had, like, this, this, um, dark round circle thing on her lip, and I just kind of, you know, mentioned it, I thought maybe she had it, you know, I, I was kind of casual about it and stuff, and then she said that it was, like, dry skin or something and um i just kind of thought oh all right and i talked to my other friends about it and stuff and that's lovely yeah <laughs> and so oh, you want to know whether she has herpes well yeah because because then it went away and then Liz, pretty much everybody has herpes in the mouth what yeah. are you doing with her well n well we like i went on a trip with her we went like on a road trip and stuff and so like we shared like a you know like a can of pop and stuff but that's because it went away I didn't think it was still there, and then <laughs> yesterday I saw she had like two bumps on her on on her mouth, and like um, as she was driving, she held the tissue to one of them, and it was bleeding and stuff. And so I'm just kind of freaked out. And my friend she's, said uh, that I, she know, saw she saw the country with a leper. That's <laughs> gonna be a good book. <laughs> this reminds me of a, a comedian that Tony and I know, and and he's yelling at me on a road trip. He's going, "I got the herpes one and two. And as he says this, a ball of phlegm. Shoots out of his mouth into my eye. And I'm going, I got the eye herpes now. I just kind of want to know, like, well, first, I'm very sensitive, and I'd like to bring it up to her because I think but, maybe she needs to see a doctor. No, Liz, please. No. It's just, you ever heard of a cold sore? 
Yeah. Okay, she has a cold sore. Okay, okay. but and then okay, that's fine. Then I don't need to bring it up to her. I mean, pretty much everybody gets cold sores or, or, or canker sores. Those are all herpes. Can I get it from her? Yeah, if she had a big active lesion, then possibly something like sharing cocaine could do it. But you didn't. No, not cocaine. Coke. A coke can. Yes. Did you coke guys? Can or coke oh. Did you guys have a lesbian experience in the back of the Bronco? Oh God, no. <laughs> but you probably already have herpes too, because most people already have it in their mouth. Okay. Oh, okay. So and you know, cramps. You, this, Liz, I'm more concerned with your preoccupation about your somatic. Uh, intactness. You, you're awfully anxious about. True. You realize that you know. Listen to this show. People that are stupider than who, who watch Bobcat's big ass show. Yeah. You understand with yeah. the somatic intactness. By the way, our our, uh, our show went on the air, and Springer got apology letters. <laughs> Dear Jerry, we're a little too harsh. Yeah, I, Andrew, what are you talking about? That she's so Tony, anxious you got a about. Let me just say this. This I think this is a refreshing problem. Yes. You well, for this show. For this show, right? I, I don't worry about it. You but, know, if you just get herpes, God bless you. <laughs> but Liz, you're you're being a little intrusive, is what Drew is saying. You're just you're being. I, the, I'm wondering why you have such high levels of anxiety about your body. I mean, you, this must not be the only thing you're anxious about. You must worry about everything with, with your body, huh? Uh, and infections and all this stuff, right? No, not really. Hmm? Are you entering that Howard Hughes, uh, Michael Jackson territory? <laughs> no. Okay. Do you uh, do you have a boyfriend? Yes. Do you wash your hands 20 times a day? No. No. Okay. Are you a virgin? No. Mm -hmm. How many partners you had? Um, like five. Mm -hmm. If you're in Chicago, do you sit on the toilet seat in the airport or no, do you I, hover above it? I hover. Here's what you do. Get yourself she laminated. Hovers. I hover. <laughs> yeah, but just Laminate your entire person. That's not, that doesn't mean like, that okay. I have a problem with germs. All right. Yeah, listen, she's a, she's leading a fairly normal life. Yeah, she's we're a little fine. freaked out about she's her friends. She's concerned about her friends' herpes. I'll talk to her friend. I mean, no, no one will be concerned. No one would mind you bringing that up. I mean, there's such a common Hey, thing. what's up with that lesion on your lip? Yeah. Adam has a thing on his chin that comes out every... You haven't had that in a while. I treated him last time. <laughs> what the time. hell happened? Oh, he, he has a, he has a tumor a, kick in? No, he has a, a, a real herpes simplex outbreak. On, it's on a chin right in here. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. Honey-colored crusts and it, it, mm. it vesiculates I, I, the whole bit. I've never seen him with this puss on before. Yeah. It's great. <sighs> What is wrong? All right, it's just true with the, if it's not something coming out of my ass, it's something growing on my chin. <laughs> it, it, you know? I ended up in the emergency room because I was constipated recently. Oh, really? No. Yeah. Okay, this is a I good was, story. Uh, oh, hold Wait, on. We got to go to bed. I overreacted, perhaps. We're running late, but we're going to come back. We'll hear all about Bob Cat's big ass. <laughs> This love line. Um, Adam, <laughs> that's true. Bobcat is here, and uh, so is Tony V. You may recognize Tony V from his uh, hit single, Take Good Care of My Baby, 1967. Yeah, Tony V and the Right Ls, I think. Yep. So, uh, yeah, we, we left our listeners. I couldn't poo. Right. And I freaked out because I didn't have Drew's home number. You went to the hospital for this? Yeah, I think I overreacted. It How like, long had it been since you'd uh, I didn't know that was the problem. I, I, I hadn't pooed, and it was, once again, 4.30 in the morning. I thought, like, Doc, I thought, like, I, I was having appendicitis or gallbladder. It really hurt. So I go in there. They take blood. They take, uh, it also, you know, when they, in the, they, they take blood. They do this. Yeah, but they also took an x-ray, and then he took a stool sample. But then they, they, he goes, he goes, uh, you have an impacted colon. I'm going, well, in layman's terms. He goes, you're Cut. constipated. I'm like... <laughs> Man, I feel bad. I, I, I cut the uh, head trauma patient off in line. I can't poo. I'm a <laughs> celebrity, and I can't poo. Back up. That can hurt. I'm making me very, very painful. Now, Drew, do you really take young take, for that stuff? I, I, I know. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to give out my age, but I have the innards of, of a seven-year-old man. Clearly, all I live on is, is, is prunes and hummus. Oh. So, uh, so, so. Oh, that now, ain't pretty. Now, you, you have to. Head. What? I think it's all in his head. Oh yeah. No, yeah. It's, it's other places. But Drew, you had to. Uh, You've taken stool samples, right? Every day. Every day. You mean this? This? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But here's the thing: the guy who took my stool Drew sample. Drew just held his index finger up. By the way, <laughs> the doctor who took my stool actually sample actually licked it first, which <laughs> which made me a little nervous. He, he, the guy who took my stool sample, hem and hawed forever. He's like, oh, you're gonna feel some slight discomfort, blah, 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 blah. and I'm just like, do it, do it, it. do it. Yeah. But I don't. You don't get too lippy, right. by the way, when you're naked and your ass is hanging up in the air. Yeah, I was all ears. Here. I'm going, you golf? Wow, how odd. So. uh... So we finally, here's what I'm saying. I try to live my life without regrets. But when the guy had his hand in my ass, I just really wish, just for just for a split second, I wish I went, 
Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, just, 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 and then he would have freaked out, and I would have freaked out. Oh, I mean, I mean, ouch, right? Ouch. <laughs> Grab his hand. Where are you going, <laughs> doctor man? Drew, do they have to get a stool sample by um, smearing a little on the glove? I mean, yeah, that's one way of doing it. But it, clearly, he had to reach up there and make sure the impaction, where the impaction yeah, was. He I was up, I, I, yeah, all I know is was, I felt him around my tonsil. If it's very hard, you have to actually break it up with your finger. Yay! Yeah. Right. How far, you deserve every dollar good. you make, Doc. <laughs> How far down the mine do you have to go before you hit gold? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, if you should be able to feel it at the fingertip. It felt like about four really? feet. Knuckle the finger. Right. Knuckle the finger. All I know is that I, I felt his elbow. Got to oh. break it up. Sometimes you got to break it up. Uh, you know, I had... Uh, <laughs> I'm fine in that department, by the way. I am not impacted one little bit. But I recently had my first uh, foray into that uh, particular procedure. You had a, 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 a sigmoidoscope? Yeah. A, yeah uh, and the, I had a woman doctor, and she, you know, was trying to brace me for I got to stick my finger inside your butt and <laughs> I wanted to be well like it doesn't bug me so before she even said it I was up with my pants around my ankles like I was a little bit too anxious for it to happen <laughs> right yeah you know no I'm, I'm cool guy right ahead she goes well I was gonna suggest we do that and I go yeah oh yeah that's great I'm just <laughs> I need to look at your throat <laughs> right. first it was a female doctor uh, the the irony is her husband's probably been begging her to do it to him for 10 years <laughs> meanwhile uh, a, a total stranger Tony walks in and she's got her finger up his Tony, ass I do that at work all day. I don't want to Maybe you that. weren't even going to get it, you know, and she <laughs> no. just says, well, he's got his <laughs> ankles and, you know, and I feel bad. Right. So, Drew, to get a stool sample from a guy who's not able to produce a stool, you got to go in after the stool and then whatever stuck well, to I your mean, nail, you, you go, scrape onto yeah. a, a slide? Yeah, it's nice to wear a glove. So nail oh, I see. But, but, uh, Gardening or golf? <laughs> but you also want to feel the prostate and make sure there are no masses in there and things. Like oh, that, so, boy. Yeah. That is, they had one of those uh, things you change light bulbs and ceilings with. That's what they had for me. One of those sticks that they used to get <laughs> yeah, to the can yeah. lights up in the amphitheater. I don't know if there's going to be twisting involved. Elroy. Eloy. Eloy. I mean, e Eloy. Eloy. What's going on? You're 22. Well, I I was just kicking in at home tonight, so I thought I'd call you guys. Were you chilling with your homies? No, I'm just <laughs> by myself tonight. But what the deal is, is like, the only time I remember really having an orgasm when I when I jizza is when I was like uh, going through the wet, the wet dream stage, you know? So you don't have orgasms? Well, I do, but it's always like the next day. Or it could be a couple days after. Do you want to say what the hell she's doing? No. no. What are you saying, uh, Eloy? Well, <laughs> okay, you know, you usually associate the, the feeling of the orgasm with um, the time when you... you, you uh, Ejaculate. Or, yeah, when, when, yeah. You, when you're It's nuts. usually in the same 15-minute period yeah. for me. Yeah. Well, it, it's not like you whack off and then you're halfway through your day at no, work and... Not. Oh, <laughs> Christ! <laughs> Oops! Right, that's how it is. Really? Really? I, if wow. you whacked off five times in a row, would you then have five spontaneous <laughs> orgasms spread out throughout the day? No, it would be just like You'd one, like huge, a one gun. huge feeling. Because I don't even really Like know. a spackle gun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know like um, how to associate the two together. That's what I'm saying. All right, are, are, so, you on, are you on medication? No, not at all. So you can have something come out of your penis other than either urine or pussy discharge and not feel any sensation. No, I'd I'd rather have oral sex performed on me to get to get a sensation just that her mouth's on my my schlong. That's it. <laughs> have you ever had uh, a, a BJ, Eloy? Say what? Have you had a BJ? A BJ? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. right on. You have all the time. That I die. All right, I'm gonna put Eloy on hold. The uh, thing that amazes me about uh, women and how stupid the they are is about me is that he dialed the phone. <laughs> this uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't. This, I, I, His roommate I, must I, add on speed down. I don't think I'm buying it. I, I just can't make sense of it. I, I, I don't think, yeah. I, I, I've never. It makes me worry about spinal tumors and things. If there's something real, some real dissociation. Uh, I was going to say I've never heard of this before, but why would I have? <laughs> you know, this is the only time I've ever done this. So. Right. It doesn't come up much <laughs> right. at work. Erica. Hi. Quiet down, Drew. You're 20. Real fast, sweetie. The reason I'm calling is my sister has been acting really rebellious in the past year, and she just got suspended from school oh, last boy. week for Jeez. skipping school with an 18-year-old guy. Oh, boy. How old is she? She's 15. Mm -hmm. All right. We only have 30 seconds, so here's what you do. A little reverse psychology. You say, you know, uh, me, Mom, and Dad were talking the other day, and we thought how great it would be if you got a clitoral ring, a tattoo, and started boffing a guy who was a um, volunteer policeman who was in his uh, late 40s and possibly even got pregnant or venereal disease and, um, and moved away and lived with them in his van. 
Give her the reverse psychology. She'll um, get herself a, a checkered uh, skirt and start reading the Bible immediately. Get her to some professional help. Something, something's wrong. She, that, may, she may just be depressed. All right. We'll be back. All right. All right. I, I wish somebody could, could record these conversations we have. Yeah, we break. just finished the real show <laughs> during the break. We I, had a lot of Duke talk. I, for one, feel enlightened. <laughs> it was four minutes of wall-to-wall -wall Duke talk. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Duke talk. All right. Uh, Bob Katz, uh, Big Ass Show, FX. Every 10 night, 1030 on FX with the lovely Wing and Ding and Tony V. I'll be there. Much luck and success to you, Bob. Thanks, thanks. Come on the show anytime you like. Uh, I would say see you guys on the Ace Awards, but they got rid of them. <laughs> oh, there are no more Ace, Ace Awards? No more Ace, guys. No. It's Emmys for us or nothing. That hurts. Oh, is that right? Oh, All yeah, right. That's interesting. All right, so uh, who's coming on? Grantly, Buffalo tomorrow night. And until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying... Malalo. Malalo. <laughs> Can't even talk. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed herein are not necessarily those of the staff or management or producers or directors or the advertising or anyone. But they might be Bob's. I'm Bob, and they're mine. The producer of Loveline is Ann Wilkins. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment. Grr. Arg. We now return you to your highly tested, regularly scheduled programming. Can I go now? Bye. New Rock.